everyone and welcome to another high low game of age of empires today we've got a battle of the pierce armor as heart playing as the vietnamese in blue prepares to take on mbl playing as the bohemians in yellow now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to get their butts up to feudal age asap not a bad time for us to take a look at the civ matchup that we are going to be watching today now the vietnamese are an archer civilization with access to two pretty damn cool archer units the first is the Rattan Archer, the second fastest foot archer in the game, and one that comes with a pretty decent attack and a massive amount of pierce armor, making it very hard for enemy archer units to kill. Now, the second is their other unique unit, the Imperial Skirmisher, a better armored version of the Elite Skirmisher that comes with a higher attack and bonus against both foot archers and cav archers. Now, if that's not enough archer, archer, archer for you, basically any unit that comes out of a Vietnamese archery range comes automatically with 20% more HP. Think Vikings and their infantry. This is the Vietnamese and their ranged units. Now to support those ranged units on the field of battle, Vietnamese battle elephants can be upgraded to get 100 extra HP, and they do get the conscription upgrade free of charge, which means they hit Imperial running. Now to afford the cost of training their ranged units and their battle elephants, all economic technologies cost zero wood whatsoever and are researched twice as fast as normal. And the Vietnamese lumberjack, these individual villagers, well, they can be upgraded to generate a small amount of gold while they cut down trees. Now, unlike other civilizations with features designed to help them against raiding to protect them from being raided, the Vietnamese actually have a feature that allows them to raid a bit more efficiently. Take a look at the map, the mini map. Notice something of the line of sight of the Vietnamese. You start the game knowing exactly where your opponents are located or rather where your opponents have spawned. Speaking of the opponents of the Vietnamese, let's take a look at MBL as the Bohemians, a civilization that pushes its players towards pretty much gunpowder units by making the chemistry upgrade available and therefore hand cannoneers available in the Castle Age and having access to an upgrade that increases the speed of all of their gunpowder units. Now, the Bohemians are not just a one trick hand cannoneer pony. They also have two unique gunpowder units in their own right. The first is the Hussite Wagon, an incredibly tanky, powerful siege unit, sometimes referred to as the Mobile Wall, because it can actually protect units behind it by cutting the damage of projectiles to those units in half. Ooh, ooh. Bit of a uh, tiny little bore issue there for MBL. And the second, as I mentioned, they have two very powerful, unique gunpowder units. The second is the Haufnitza, an upgraded version of the Bombard Cannon with more HP, better armor, higher damage, wider blast radius, and a massive 250 extra bonus attack against buildings. Remember, though, the cost of upgrading your BBCs to Hafnitzas is actually more expensive than going up to Imperial. Now, to support these expensive, powerful units on the battlefield, the Bohemians have a few interesting bonuses. Their Spearman line units deal 25% more damage than normal, and they can completely evolve their monks by researching an upgrade that replaces the gold cost of not only monks, but monk upgrades with food essentially turning the Bohemian Monk into a pretty cool trash unit. Now, as every other, uh, every player rather knows, gunpowder units are pretty darn expensive. To help you pay for them, universities and blacksmiths are cheaper, mining camp upgrades are all free of charge, markets work 80% faster, and villagers do become harder to raid because they benefit from two Monk upgrades that make them both move faster and have more HP. I'm, of course, referring to Fervor and Sanctity. So we've got a very... Interesting Civ matchup. The Vietnamese here, I would say, might want to be the one putting on the aggression. The last thing you want is these ridiculous Bohemian super powerful units on your front step, at your front door, whatever expression you want to choose. Basically allowing MBL to dictate the pace of the game might not go very well for our Vietnamese. That being said, the Vietnamese and their archers can pack a punch in the early to mid game because of that extra HP. So let's see what actually happens, what transpires. By the way, oh, he hasn't seen his Piggly Wigglies up here. Ooh, Hart. I wonder if he thinks he's been lamed, or I wonder if he thinks uh, they're, they're somewhere else. His scout is desperately looking for these Piggly Wigglies. I think because he saw that the other two were here, he assumes that the remaining two are somewhere down here. And now he's looking in the uh, area that he's already seen before, perhaps expecting MBL's scout to be followed by a pair of pepperonis. No, they're being that scout's being followed by a trio of militia. Let's take a look at their starting bases, the resources, primary gold for our Vietnamese, nice and secure to the back, as are the berries. 
he now hits Feudal Age our Bohemian. Has not even clicked up yet. I'm assuming after this one villager completes, he's going to force drop some food, and there it is. So, our Bohemian, with a more of a uh, arena-style build, going up to 23 villagers, definitely going fast. Castle, which means uh, aggression out of him. <laughs> okay, the exact opposite that I think uh, Hart wants to see right now. Primary X marks the spot, stone in the forward position, additional gold to the front, additional gold and stone up to the uh, northern part of the map. And let's see whether or not these Dark Age units can accomplish anything against a Feudal Age Vietnamese who, okay, does have a stable. Training another scout out of it. Militia Art chasing a villager, as I apologize, the game has derped out on us a little bit. Militia have taken about 40 HP of damage. Scout can't really stick around here much longer. Also has not seen the Piggly Wigglies. That being said, some of these villagers shouldn't be sticking around here either. And once this aggression is over, we'll take a look at the Bohemian base. Although I suspect, like I said, when your opponent is going fast castle. Although, is it fast castle now? All right. First draw, first blood being drawn here by everybody. Two, three kills to one. All the militia lie dead, but so does, I believe, the starting scout of the Vietnamese. And look at that, MBL. Uh, what a gentleman. Discovers the pigs and does nothing with them. I was going to say it's a fast castle play. I thought it was, but I am absolutely mistaken here. It is Hart who is housed with 25 population. Uh, this is not a fast castle at all. This is just a... I'm going to go up to Castle Age with more villagers so I can, I guess, have a... Bigger economy? I uh, will find out what the hell the 23 villager play is for the Bohemians. As a Bohemian scout bites the dust. And that's all she wrote for that starting army. The three militia, the scout, they are all dead. Still has not seen the pigs. MBL is not sending them, but he's also not stealing them. So a still gentlemanly play. Let's take a look at his resources because I assumed incorrectly that he would be putting on the aggression Primary gold a little bit to the front. Primary stone nice and secure to the back. Got additional gold to the rear. Actually, both additional golds are to the rear, which is fantastic. And the extra stone is here in the forward position. Forests, Sir Walloffs, let's take a look. Our Bohemian not really interested in walling his base. Our Vietnamese not really interested in walling his base unless they've both um, developed a taste for Swiss cheese all of a sudden. Neither of these bases are very walled off. And Hart is now adding some gold miners as MBL has had four already. Okay. So creating a uh, backward wall-off <laughs> is our Vietnamese here. Ensuring that this is about as far as MBL is going to penetrate. Otherwise, he would have to go through a town center. And these aren't exactly scouts. These are mm, pretty much dead men walking when it comes to fighting or moving underneath a town center. How much of the map have the players seen? So they've seen each other's bases. Obviously, the Vietnamese knows exactly where the opponent is. And if you look at the scouting, it's pretty much identical on the minimap. Neither player really in any kind of rush <laughs> to uh, explore the map. Now, the question I have is, did Hart see that the Piggly Wigglies had yellow bandanas on them? In which case, does he develop a soft spot for his former Aftermath teammate and go easy on him? Or did he suspect that, oh, shit, I just forgot to scout that part of the map. And so here are my piglies. Okay, yet another kill. Our Vietnamese is taking a very healthy kill lead. By the way, the army that our Bohemian is building, as good as it is against maybe cavalry units. Uh, hello, wake up. It may not necessarily be the greatest against skirmishers. I mean, these guys die to skirmishers. These guys die to skirmishers. Now MBL is housed at 45 and starting the wall off his base. So a bit of a delayed wall off. I mean, starting to wall off your base at the 15, 16 minute mark of the game is definitely a uh, sign that the players have been fueling their militaries with wood as opposed to their structures. And here we go. I, again, an inexplicable move in by our Bohemian who just basically sacrifices two archers for literally nothing. Kill count seven to two. Sees the white flag up on the archery range. What will pop out? You know it's going to be skirmishers. And Hart, because he's not really training any gold intensive units. No uh, archers for him like MBL has. Six archers on the way. 
does not need more than one villager on gold at the moment. So neither player at the moment banking any resources, neither player making any indication that they're rushing their butts up to Castle Age or rather are interested at all into going into Castle Age. Okay, I couldn't really see the bamboo behind this tree, which is why I double clicked this bamboo. Okay, for now, MBL's army is circling to the right. The forward position of the Vietnamese base. This pig, I feel like this pig's been moving around for a while. Kind of avoiding the slaughterhouse. But little by little, the Vietnamese base has been walled off on the flanks. That being said, MBL's carved out a decent chunk of the map for himself. Pretty large. Archers move in, try to get a villager. They fail miserably with three spearmen now. The Bohemian scouts may not really want to chase into this, although Art may not want to chase into these archers. That being said, if we're calculating who's losing out here, it's definitely MBL losing archer after archer after archer. And now the scouts have to get the hell out of here, which leaves the archers on their own. And we all know what happens to archers on their own against skirmishers. It's not even the night. The day is full of terrors for them. What's the uh, Game of Thrones quote? The night is dark and full of terrors. Well, the day is pretty not dark, pretty light, and still full of terrors for this last archer who <laughs> goes the wrong way and pays the price for it. But we've got yet another Bohemian army now for the third or fourth time this game attempting to get something done here. And that same secondary wall off is going up and fantastic. Oh, Hart not garrisoning his villagers soon enough, quick enough. We'll lose a villager here. I mean, he's going to lose a scout or two for it, but... Okay. I mean, at this point, the kill count 14 to 4. That being said, the first villager kill of the game definitely going to MBL as both players approach Castle Age. Pretty much at the same time. And Okay. Uh, silly, silly Spearman. Open the gates to hell. And now he's trying on his own to take down this entire Vietnamese army. Good luck to you. Says the caster as the unit dies immediately. So these units I don't think are going to kill the villagers. But they are definitely going to shoo them away. From constructing or at least completing the construction of this wall off. And MBL hits the next age. Will Hart see the castle? I mean he must know that that's. Either a siege workshop or a castle, right? Seeing the spread of those those villagers, he's going to know very soon <laughs> it's going to be a castle once it starts firing arrows down onto his head. Looks like the Bohemian scouts are dead. The two remaining spearmen here. I like that Hart is not playing into this. Not really with the stable adding any more cavalry units against those ridiculously dangerous Bohemian spearmen line units. Remember, they do deal 25% more bonus damage, so 15 becomes 19. Which is just a uh, pretty damn strong bonus against any kind of... Even, let's say, early Castle Age. Even a Knight would do well to shy away from engaging into a 19 attack bonus Spearman. Now, he sees the castle as it begins firing. Castle just went up already, has 6 kills. MBL decides to delete his own wall off begins the Hussite advance. And now, <laughs> let's see what's going on. Hart is trapped in his forward position. His base is now being raided by knights, and it's not his spearman line units that deal more bonus damage. But you know what? 15 is not bad. 15 bonus damage is not bad at all, especially when you're backed up by a town center and a knight of your own. Let's see whether or not our Bohemian can extend the villager kill lead that he has of two to nothing. Yep, three. Looks like on the other side of the map, our Vietnamese has actually managed to get a villager kill of his own. Ooh, and again, Hart is not garrisoning this uh, town center. He's had a few opportunities here to get a good amount of damage on. Look at these knights. They're literally a uh, toe stub away from dying. And again, he's not garrisoning. Okay, doesn't really need to in this case, I guess. Oh, this is the <laughs> this is the surviving skirmisher here. I was wondering if that one kill is the villager. But no, that is the remnant of the aggressive, ex aggressive, oh my god, aggressive expeditionary force of the Vietnamese. 
who is now going to have to contend with a pretty hard unit to contend with. Six villagers on stone for our Bohemian. He's going up to 400 stone. He doesn't quite have the gold to buy. Okay, never mind. He bought stone. He sold wood. He bought stone. I was going to say he doesn't have enough stone yet to plop down another castle. Will our Vietnamese catch wind of these villagers? Oh, so close. Okay, now he does with the uh, line of sight. This is, by the way, a fantastic hill to put a castle on. Secure the other gold. Destroy basically one of everything. A, an archery range of barracks and a stable. On the other side of the map, a couple of knights are trying to bust their way in here. Villagers walling off furiously, trying to keep them for out. MBL's taking a five villager kill lead to one, and he's also caught up in total villager kills. But Siege Workshop is up for our Vietnamese who, oh my goodness. Remember, their economic upgrades cost no wood, which does save a decent amount of wood. He's got bow saw, horse collar, and handcart, does our Vietnamese. And that is a lot of wood savings, which he can now invest in training four mangonels. Oh, but the castle clips four becomes three. That reminds me of the uh, the funny Mel Brooks scene when uh, it's a history of the world part one where Moses comes down off the mountain with three tablets and he says, yay, I have these 15 commandments. And then he drops one of the tablets and he goes, oh, I mean, 10 commandments. That is exactly what happened to those mangonels. And holy moly. I mean, they pop out and they die immediately at this point. Now, I was going to say, at this point, our Vietnamese might want to use his villagers. Because remember, in one of the latest patches, villagers were now given a plus six. I don't know why sometimes it shows it and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know why. But villagers do now come with a plus six attack bonus against heavy siege armor, which used to be called Hussite Wagon Armor. And I believe, according to Capture Age, still is. You see Hussite Wagon Zero. Except now that armor class, the heavy siege armor class, is shared with Hussite wagons and ballista elephants from the Khmer, the Kamai. And villagers come with a plus six attack bonus. So if he can catch these Hussite wagons like here, for example, villagers are not going to be too shabby of a unit to deal with it. MBL attempts a castle, sees that it's literally right next to Hart's castle, who's already basically up. And so I love the use of mangonels, but I mean, villagers should swarm over this and try to get that plus six attack bonus and again i'm not too sure why it doesn't show sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't i i don't know if it kicks in in the imperial age or what but i swear they do i'm not making it up villagers move forward tony the tiger does not like the placement of these this castle says this is my hunting grounds how's that skirmisher doing by the way still just hanging out this night oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> one HP night. Okay, we'll see what you can get done. For now, the barracks, I believe our Vietnamese destroyed himself. And so the archery range and the stable are still up. Not that he's training anything out of either of these structures. This is a pure siege workshop play right now. He has secured his third gold after losing his secondary gold. But now there's also a castle. I'm not too sure about the placement of this castle. Okay, the Rattan Archer see its second fastest foot archer in the game after the plumes, and unfortunately, not fast enough to escape this gauntlet of death. Oh, actually, they're uh, both the castle and the Hussite double whammy are, I was gonna, but literally about to say, are missing every volley, and then, of course, uh, they double whammy those Rattan Archers. But so far, MBL with three town centers to three is ahead four villagers, double the army count. And usually, double the army count eh, sometimes includes some crappy units. We're talking pikemen, skirmishers. Nuh uh. 10 Hussite wagons. This is not a weak unit at all. Now, throwing them against castles and uh, mangonels endlessly is definitely not a way to keep them alive and keep your army value where it needs to be. Where are the villagers, by the way? Did they all return home? Oh, no, no. They're mining the X mark to the spot stone. <gasps> oh, no. Okay, those rattan archers died. Hart says, you know what I like? Rattan archers. Fully upgraded, a rattan archer should have 10 pierce armor, which I believe is the same as a Hussite wagon, the elite Hussite wagon. So right now it has, and that's why I introed the game by saying we've got a battle of the pierce armor. Um, 
Although, to be fair, the similarities don't just end there. They both have uh, what I would call one and a half unique units. They have their unique unit, the Hussite Wagon, where's the Rattan Archer, it's probably still in the castle. And then they have upgrades to existing units. One Civ can upgrade their Skirmishers, the other Civ can upgrade their Bombard Cannons. And so, is the Savar, is the Imperial Skirmisher, the Imperial Camel Rider, the Hafnitsa, are those technically quote-unquote unique units? I don't know. Uh, I guess the way to find out is to put them up against the Samurai and see whether or not the Samurai has any attack bonus against them. On the other hand, it's also uh, easy to just click on the unit if we ever get to see them and see if they have that armor, but for now, we'll call it one and a half. I know there's going to be people in the comments who disagree. But uh, that's the beauty of Age of Empires. All right. Where are you going with these Hussite wagons? They are good, but they're not good enough to take on a castle. Wow, stable falls. I don't know if the castle destroyed the stable or if the Vietnamese player just hit the old cancel button. <laughs> the rocks bounced off the dead space and landed on the Hussite wagon. That is hilarious. And a third castle. Okay. So, not quite a red Phosphoru build. <laughs> I wonder if you can do a uh, red Phosphoru build with such an expensive unit. 110 wood, 70 gold. Or if it's uh, more reserved for the kind of cheaper unique units. Another run by in the top left. It looks like another run by at the top there are Hussite wagons all over the place i apologize for zooming out so much i'm not a big fan of doing that also not a big fan of the game consistently derping out here with all the uh little f freezing situations sorry i'm gonna do something i almost never do did that Hussite wagon just teleport behind those trees i thought we dealt dealt with this oh my god it did. I'm so sorry to stop the game mid-cast, but what the hell? <laughs> I thought we dealt with this. What the actual F is going on with Age of Empires? Fix one glitch, seven more appear. Somehow that villager did take a rock to the face. Ooh, I wonder why he took a rock to the face. Look at the stats on that villager. Loom and Sanctity. Five Bohemian Monks, by the way, are also on the field of battle. How's our uh, Star Trek Hussite Wagon? Looks like he died to these Rattan Archers. Both players are now in Imperial Trebs. Should be making an appearance, at least for our Vietnamese. Four Trebs! He wants to get this castle the hell out of here. What are you down here? You are the, the few knights that remain. Looks like the Skirmisher did also die at some point. And now... The Bohemian army count hasn't really grown that much. Vietnamese one has grown. He still has a random spearman, those two weak as shit knights. But now he's got 13 rattan archers. Let's take a look at their upgrades because I just saw a slew of upgrades being researched. So they're at six pierce armor, which shouldn't... It's not terrible against the Hussite wagon that does 10 pierce. And like I said, if they go up to the elite version... Oh, and there's Hafnitsa. Which, if you weren't familiar, is the root... Or the, I guess, the uh, etymology of the word howitzer, if you're a fan of uh, that big old cannon. I believe the word howitzer does derive from Haufnitze. Outpost goes up. Outpost basically does what it was supposed to do, which is discover shit. Seize the castle. And now the battle has pivoted here to the northern quadrant of the map, where a whole bunch of elite Hussite wagons with Wagenberg tactics... MBL off the back of 124 villagers has just invested so much of his economy into these powerful gunpowder units. No wonder his army count, small but mighty, remains at a consistent 16 to 18 for the last 15 minutes. He has just been saving up all these resources to invest. Was I right about the 10 pierce armor? I was right about the 10 pierce armor. The rattans. Still not. Well, they're at 8 against the 13 attack. Oh, Afnitsa's though. Afnitsa with the bigger everything. To be fair, I mean, losing 4 Trebs is really not great. But taking down 2 castles 
is pretty damn good, especially if your opponent is relying on those castles to train their entire army. I don't see any other units. They both still have a single spearman from the feudal age, but aside from that, it is all Haufnitze, Monk, and Hussite wagon against basically Rattan archers and Bombard cannons. Rattan archers are now elite. They also now come with 10 pierce armor. What they don't come with is that it can defense at the moment against these conversion attempts. Block printing is also joining in here. So the monks are going to see further and convert from further away. I love the sniping using that extra pierce armor to soak up damage from the Hussite wagons while you go Haufnitza hunting. But eventually enough conversions, enough balls from these Hussite wagons, which now I believe fire all of their bullets, multiple bullets in once. Making them a little bit easier to micro compared to the last version where you had to really like really stutter stutter step. And again, MBL still sticking around the same basic army count. Villagers repairing, repairing, repairing. I love it, but don't stop now. Don't stop believing in this one Bombard Cannon. And they stop believing. Okay. <laughs> Decent, ar I mean, army counts are identical. Decent civilian population, but you cannot go ranged against this kind of army composition of Haufnitze and Hussite Wagon and Monk. I mean, he ended up sniping three of those five monks, but that's why he was adding light cavalry in at the end, and that's why he was adding the stables. This should have probably been done 15 or 20 minutes ago when those first Hussite Wagons came in, because as strong as they are Pierce armor-wise, they are incredibly weak melee armor-wise. And the Vietnamese uh, still do get Cavaliers, unless I'm mistaken. No Paladins, of course, but they do get Cavaliers, and even missing Blast Furnace, which is... Uh, what the developers taketh away from those 420 HP elephants. Now, I wouldn't really recommend going elephants against the Bohemians with the Hussite reforms and their food-only monks and monk techs, but uh, light cavalry may have been annoying, and also cavaliers could have been fun to see here. Any kind of heavy melee would have helped out here because I think maybe 10 light cavalry could wreck this entire army. Even without uh, Blast Furnace, I mean, you know what, maybe not. There's absolutely literally no upgrades. So Hart, knowing what he had to do, preparing what he had to do, unfortunately just doesn't have time to do what he wanted to do as MBL presses in with a fresh castle, and he's gobbling up, gobbling up rather resources all over the map. There's a few neutral patches here that our Vietnamese has not even seen. Has MBL seen these? Yeah, he has. So the scout, look at MBL's vision, by the way. He scouted the entirety of the map. He has all five relics. Sometimes the uh, when the pro players play against one, one another, if they want a GG, but they're not really sure, they'll ask the other player, what's your villager count? What's your relic count? And if uh, MBL answered honestly, <laughs> which he has no reason not to, says all five relics, uh, that might be a reason that Hart uh, decided to tap out because it's like with certain civilizations, you just can't give them all of these resources like the Saracens, for example. They will just absolutely overwhelm you. And even though this army, yeah, OK, it'll die eventually to more and more siege units. But now there's basically no more gold here for our Vietnamese. He's gotten that one patch. This patch is basically unminable and he doesn't even know that this patch exists. And so that's why he's transitioning. We saw the light cavalry upgrade as opposed to cavaliers. If he saw that there's gold here, maybe he would have stuck around and tried to gone for gone up to cavaliers. But absolutely with no gold, there is not much that our Vietnamese can do here in MBL with the Battle of the Pierce Armor. Unfortunately for uh, Hart, if you compare the stats, <laughs> one unit has literally, literally five times more HP than the other unit. Ignore the costs, ignore all that. But when you, you're on an equal footing of 14 rattan archers to 12 going up to 17 hussite wagons that's not a battle the rattans can take as chunky as their pierce armor is 64 hussite literally double the amount of hussite wagons if this was in reverse maybe question mark maybe i'm not sure but it's not in reverse and so there you go our mbl literally just getting up to castle imperial pumping out that massive army pkpm 19 minutes in nine minutes in both players sub 200 
the economies, yeah, uh, even without the relic gold, about 10% difference in economies. So not the end of the world here. A little bit of extra food for our Vietnamese, everything else. Th this literally should be the opposite. It should be more wood, more gold, and more stone for the Vietnamese in order to beat the Bohemians. Otherwise, you're just 3,000 gold behind your 2,200, which is basically three and a half castles worth of stone behind and wood as well. I'm curious to see if either player got their unique technologies. We saw Wagenberg, but I don't think we saw anything else. No. Three conversions, seven raisings to three, not really playing a role. 91 kills to 79. Nah, yeah, not the highest kill count, but at the end of the day, MBL. 27 villager kills with that ridiculous teleporting Hussite wagon. I even had to pause the game. I, how many times do I do that? Once a year? Once every year and a half? I don't think I've uh, done that more than once or twice since I started this channel, but that's just ridiculous. I thought we dealt with this already. I thought we, uh, the stacking and the teleporting and the random uh, nonsense that happens in this game. But ultimately, I said in the beginning, this kind of matchup for the Vietnamese, you want to be the one putting on the aggression. You want to be the one putting pressure on all the precious resources. You want to be the one controlling the dynamic and the pace of the game. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting back and trying to micro on top of hills with a... Uh, Cool unit, don't get me wrong, this is Huskarl level Pierce Armor. Unfortunately, no attack bonuses of any kind. Uh, even though your villagers, together with some light cab, could have wiped this army out. And he did do a fantastic job sniping as many Hafnesis as possible. But ultimately, it is MBL who dictates the pace of the game, gobbles up huge amounts of resources, especially the gold and the stone. And more importantly than gobbling up his own resources, he lames the gobbling of his enemy's resources. And even though, I mean, I don't think uh, Hart even mined a single rock, a single pebble from this quarry. MBL's the one who depleted this to down to 950 stone. Amazing, amazing play out of him. And Hart, like I said, had the right idea, plopped the enemy infrastructure, was getting that upgrade for light cavalry, but a little bit too little, a little bit too late for him. And it is the Bohemian who overwhelms the center with the multi-pronged attack. We saw the Viper do it with Vietnamese battle elephants. Now we're seeing MBL do it with Hussite wagons. Just a few of them over here, a few of them over here, a few of them from the future over here. And it is with that multi-pronged attack of this very chunky unit that MBL takes the W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.